All right, I got Roberta Tachi on the show today. She's a medical intuitive, a healer, and specifically a quantum healer. Roberta, welcome to the show. Hey, it's a pleasure to be here, Joe. <laughs> so, you know, I am excited to have you. I say this about every guest, but seriously, I have interviewed so many coaches and healers. And a matter of fact, I even had a quantum coach or quantum healer. I think that's what she calls herself, frequency expert on the show, maybe about a month ago. Great, great, great person. Uh, I met with you recently. We got introduced uh, recently because there is a summit that you're going to be hosting, which we'll talk about later in the in the show. Uh -huh. And I said, "Well, what is it that you that you do?" And you're like, "Well, I do this quantum healing technique." And I'm like, "Okay, like I believe in this stuff, by the way, because I understand uh, from several books that I've read, the Intention Experiment by Lynn Mctaggart, The Power of Eight. Oh, you yeah. see it all the time. These these amazing and and how." healing and Joe Dispenza talking about in the quantum and how he has plenty of results. So for me, there's no doubt that there is a quantum and that people, uh, there's a potential to heal from there. And you said, well, do you have a little bit of time? Uh, do you have five minutes? I'll work on you. I said, sure, let's, let's go. And I forget what you asked me. I think you asked me something like, Joel, what, uh, what do you want to work on? And I said, well, I've got this nagging right pain in my right, uh, levator and this, the scalenes here. And I've got some pain. I forget where else I said. You and said then, I memorize everything when the client says. So I remember when you said you said I have a problem with my left hip. <laughs> left hip. Okay, left hip. And then before I even said, I wasn't. By the way, wasn't even gonna mention my ankle. I was like, eh, my ankle. Like it's a problem, but it's not the. This is more of a problem. And before I even said anything, I was like, that's pretty much it. And then you looked at me and you said, what about the right ankle? I said, what? <laughs> What, what do you mean? And you're like, the problem is your right ankle. And you started working on the right ankle. We, st we went through some of the work that you did. You can't give me a snapshot of that. And I did feel some levity in the right ankle. It's not 100%, but I did. It has felt better just so you know, this last week. Haven't changed anything. I haven't done anything. I think we saw each other about two weeks ago. I haven't yeah. done anything different since I last saw you. Been walking on it, doing all the same crazy kind of ridiculous workouts that I do to damage it more. And I haven't had any issues. It's been feeling great. <laughs> So here's to say, I don't know what you did. You do something drastically different. I've never experienced what you do from anybody yeah. else. And I said, I got to get you on the podcast because I've never heard about, and you said, no, 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 this is very different. I think I said, I told you, well, yeah, no, I get it. It's about like the subconscious. And you said, no, 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 that's like one layer. We're going into a layer that, you know, you're trying to different. To yeah. very different. Needless to say, so if you're listening guys and you're hearing this podcast, this is what we're going to get into today. Roberta, before we jump into what you do as a quantum healer, and that we'll talk about even some of what you did on me, I think it's really for the user, the, the listeners to understand, but talk about just, you know, you've done many healing modalities and therapies in the past, but now you've arrived at this quantum healing. How did that happen for you? What was your journey that led you to this? And just kind of realizing like, wow, out of everything, like this is the most impactful and the most significant. I'm not going to do any of that other stuff. Yeah. Well, well, it's a pleasure to, to know that your ankle is getting much better. It's great. You can do a little bit more because sometimes there are layers and it can be completely released, completely released from the root cause, which is all about. I love what I'm doing now because I'm going toward the deepest layer, the root cause of issues and it is quantum, not because of the quantum healing modality that also exists that people train, but it's quantum because first we work with the field of uh, quantum, which I call the field of consciousness, where everything is revealed. So like, how did I know through the Zoom that you're only showing your chest, uh, you know, and your head that your ankle has something? It's because it's revealed in this field of consciousness right here. And when you are more present, it shows even more with more detail and more specific specificity. Well, and, and Roberta, yeah, for people that don't know, specific. you're Portuguese, right? You're Brazilian, right? <laughs> it's very specific, very precise. That's what I say. It's like I call this the laser technique release because 
You got to be really precise and it's very precise to go right into where the problem is because it's reflecting other areas of your body. Like you said, oh, I have a problem in my right shoulder and I'm like seeing your right ankle and I know from the right ankle you cause a problem to your hip. When you have a problem in your hip, you have a pain in your shoulder. But if you're going only in your shoulder, you might not, even though the shoulder has a very good point that is connected with the ankle, <laughs> but you might not solve as fast as you can when if you don't go right into the right place. So the reason I begin with all of that, if it's okay to tell a little bit of detail of my story is I got very sick when I was 27. This is more than 30 years ago. And I had an auto, a rare autoimmune disease and called myasthenia gravis. And I was paralyzing everything, like my mouth, my tongue, my eyes. I could not blink. I didn't have the strength to blink. Wow. I could not brush my teeth without holding my tongue with my hand to put the tongue where you know, away from the area that I wanted to brush. That's how bad it was, like really bad. And my arms and the legs. So when when I the doctor finally discovered, because the first time you go to the doctor, the doctor said you are stressed. <laughs> and I'm telling my husband, I'm not. I'm getting stressed with the doctor telling me that I'm stressed. I have an issue. And many times, as a woman, uh, you do not know that, Joel. But a lot of the times, as a woman, the doctors always feel that oh, you're creating something. You, uh, you, it's already scientific proof that uh, you have to really be advocating for your health a little bit more strong or strongly. So anyway, to make short, I had this disease. The doctor said you had three days to be hospitalized here. Otherwise, you can stop breathing. That's the next step is you already paralyze everything. The next is the respiratory system will stop and you cannot breathe. If in three minutes you realize if you're breathing less and you feel that there is no, not enough air, rush to the hospital. You have three minutes to arrive here. So it was scary, super traumatic because I was in Japan. I just arrived there a few months before. So I didn't speak the language. I was in the hospital for three months. I was intubated. I had a tumor. It was a very, very drastic thing that happened. And But so how did I go into the healing is... Uh, so after I left the hospital, I was not in a good place. I need to go to the hospital every single week because I was in a high dose of medicine. And then every single, every 15 days, every month, you know, for a long time, that's several years. So I was researching alternative medicine, anything that I could get a book to help me because this was before internet and I was in Japan. Everything was in Japanese. I didn't speak Japanese at that time. And anyway, I found a book with a meditation and this meditation, I'm calling it a meditation, was an exercise to connect with your higher self, your lower self and your personality. I said, okay, I'm going to do that. I sit down, I read the thing, I have instructions here, I'm going to connect with all this. <laughs> and then suddenly, instead of what happening, what was said, was written in the book, what happened is I saw my body internally. I saw, weird as it sounds, I saw my own cells, and I saw the paralyzation, in, the internal paralyzation. And I had a communication with myself, again, as weird as it sounds, that they were telling me they were paralyzed because it was an order I gave them. And I'm like, huh, I, I, I instructed them to paralyze. I said, oh, if I instructed you to paralyze, then now I instruct you to move. And they all said, okay. <laughs> and then... It was really like you are the boss of your own biology, really, your own cells, everything. And they said, okay. And then I, I kind of opened my eyes. I said, what, what just happened? I, I couldn't explain even what happened. It was kind of strange. And I didn't stop taking medicine because I had that experience. But as I went to the doctor, he started to see that I was improving quite fast. And he said, let's reduce the medicine. Let's reduce and no, no symptoms. And then he said, let's stop completely this medicine. And this is more than 30 years ago. I never had to take 
prednisone, the, the cortisol, the corticoid that I used to take a very high dose. And, and since then I said, okay, now I need to know more about what happened and, and help others because it was very traumatic for me. And I started to study this and study that. And I had a pain in my left hip, like you, <laughs> for quite a while. And I was already doing acupressure, Japanese acupressure. I was studying this and that. And then I moved to New York and I continued studying. And that pain persisted. It was a chronic pain. I did physical therapy. I did all kinds of things, energy healing, oh, you, you name it. I have more than said to 20 certificates somewhere there that I don't even care to mention. But I learned that to go back inside of the body is the key to really open for everything. And this, this pain, I, I, it was in a Saturday, I'm sitting and I'm like, oh, here it is again, this pain in the left side. Okay, I'm ready, bring it on. <laughs> and I, and I, connect, I connected with the re- root cause of it which was not an easy thing. And uh, from that point on, I realized that is the way. The way is inside. The answer is always inside of the body. And if, and going to toward the, the, this field of uh, the quantum field that I call also the field of consciousness, which is kind of like, what is consciousness? What's the quantum field? For me, it's like uh, saying that, um, Like we have the air everywhere, the field is here below even the air, you know, it's like the substract of reality is, it's, it is, if it's like a table that you have your computer on, your mic, things there. So I would say that the table is the field where reality happens, but it's not, not really a good, a table is like a flat. So it's like, it's everywhere interpenetrating everything. And that's why I could see your body because you are in the field. I am in the field. So I don't need to be next to you, touching you. I don't go sending energy. I used to do this many years ago. (laughs) I don't need to do that. I just connect with you. You connect more with yourself. It reveals in the field everything that you need to open. And and I have this gift or curse (laughs) that that uh, if you are even more and more present, more I can see what's going on. And then I can guide you. Go right there. Right there is the root cause. And that's how it opens. Make sense? <laughs> it's a bit weird. <laughs> okay. So many things to I, I ask you. Yeah. And for anybody that's listening, you know, it's funny because I was on Zoom with you and you asked me some question. We were just getting ready to get started. And I made a slight, slight movement of kind of like, like a little fear spike kind of in my body. But if you were over Zoom, I promise you, you would not have noticed it. Like it would have been very hard to pick up that like, I got like a little bit nervous because I was like, oh man, like in my head, what I was thinking was like, oh my God, like I wonder what she's going to find. Like that's what I was thinking. Mm-hmm. And before we even started, you said, hey, just relax. Like I see you just like jumped and like, I promise you, if anyone's listening, you could not have seen, I didn't physically like jump in my body. I did. I will, I admit, but you saw that going back to what you're saying. Like I just, you saw that in the quantum, which again, anyone who's listening thinks this is crazy. Like, no, that happened in our, in our meeting, you know? Yeah. And this, this movement, I call many times like a micro movement because people can be next to you and they do not notice anything. And suddenly you contract your stomach. And how many people have digestive issues? They have digestive issues and they change their diet and they do everything about food and everything, but still they do not know the main cause many times is a little thought, just suddenly a thought pass through, they contract the stomach. They do not know they contract because it's subtle. It's really subtle. It's deep, but it affects the body in a known subtle way, which is, your digestion is affected. You don't absorb everything you're eating. You have problems and, and, and then you keep changing the diet and suddenly you do not know what you're going to eat anymore. But it's subtle, subtle like that. So we contract because there is a mind, normally a mind that is still lodged in the body from the past. 
the, the, the same as I had a mind in the past that was in my left hip. When I go there, the whole memory of what happened with the left hip, the whole episode, everything that was related to that chronic pain. Chronic pain normally has a lot of emotions involved, but besides the emotions, there is a deeper layer, which is the mind. The mind of that time that something happened, <laughs> or something happened in the past, and, and the body contracted not to be able, not to experience what happened. So mm. when we cannot experience what happened, Whatever happened, the, the emotion that is, you know, naturally arise is repressed, suppressed and lodged in the body. But also the mind of that particular age stays there frozen in that age. Wow. It so reminds my autoimmune, me. I have my autoimmune was some, the seed for this myasthenia. In my case was when I was six months old six months old and everything was revealed. You can see everything. You, you can access the whole idea, the mind of the baby and the, the decision of making this and that and, and everything. So it does not need it normally from zero or even from birth or womb to seven years old. And then later you come with layers. Wow. Fascinating. You, you were talking about too, how you ordered the cells to get better, which I find fascinating. And I always think anybody I've ever met with an autoimmune condition, they have always had some emotional traumatic event, usually right up until the point where that's what triggers the autoimmune event. And doctors can't figure it out. They're like, oh, you have that. Then they just make up the disease, the name of it. And they're like, we don't know. We have no cure. They give you steroids and things like that. Nothing ever works. And I always try to tell mm -hmm. clients, not that I'm the one that could help them from the autoimmunity. I think someone like you is much better. But I always try to just tell them that, and a lot of them just kind of shrug it off. But what I wanted to, what I wanted to ask you was ordering the cells. It reminds me of Bruce Lipton's book, Biology of Belief. And he kind of oh, talks yeah. about this innate intelligence, right, that we yeah. have, the cells. Mm -hmm. The same cells that were ordered to make you ill can now make you well again. Makes complete sense to me. I just, I'm trying to like say like, how did you get that to happen? Because then later in life, you went on, you learned all these other great techniques and modalities, but you got, you didn't get sick again. You got a left pain issue in the hip. And in my head, I would have thought, why didn't not just order the body to heal the hip? Like you just did. It sounds like eventually that's what you did. It's the same, it's the same, it's the same, uh, kind of the same thing. Although there is a, a slightly difference, which is this that I ordered myself. I did that because they said I ordered them to, to stop moving. <laughs> and this was very like uh, it was not even my intention. My intention was to do that. What was written in the book, it happened really in a natural way. And and I can say something interesting that happened. I was uh, 27 years old when this happened. When I was 23, I had an experience that I I for a for a period of time I left my body and I came back. When I came back, I used to have energy coming out of my hands. And then I was like, I was working in, in the office, you know, and then I'm like, what is this? And I would show my friends and say, look, and then, oh my gosh, there's so much energy coming out of your hands that I don't know. What is this? I don't know. <laughs> it's like I said, oh, okay, it's the healing energies that I would need a few, years, a few years later for myself. It was very interesting. So it was already I had this opening that I understood the whole universe. What I understood at that time that when I was 23 was I, I was in an unconscious trance. I did not know. I learned later. And it was uh, showing me that everything is inside there's a whole universe inside of our own body inside of ourselves and i want to say inside of ourselves because if i say body many people think it's just about the body it's not about the body the body is included it's about the internal space of your body where the field of consciousness where the quantum field is also present that's why we connect deeply with that field inside of ourselves so I I did not know that would happen, but I did not get to the root cause of uh, 
of what happened, why they paralyzed. And I was not interested at that time. I said, I, I didn't even cross my mind. I just, this happened and I was getting better and better. You can tell your body to do anything, but where this communication will go is the issue. Like when I was, the reason I told my cells is because my, I was inside of my body and my cells were telling me telepathically, I would say that's the only way I can say, they were following my instructions. And then very lightly, I said, oh, then let's change the instructions. <laughs> so I was not planning that. I had no idea. So that's why I went to study after that also because I, I thought, I want to help others. You know, I was very traumatized by this autoimmune disease because I was also in another country. It was three months in a hospital. It was quite difficult. So I wanted to help other people. And with any health issues, it was not only autoimmune, but any health issues, but serious health issues and autoimmunity normally is serious. So, so I did, you can order, you can tell your body, okay, get better, but add, add, the internal parts of your body, of your cells, of your system, are they systems, are they open to hear this message? And that is the key here. When we are connecting with our body, because what did I ask you to do after I talk about your ankle or your right ankle? I say, let's, let me guide you to be more fully connected with yourself. Because once you are more fully present, connected, which is not just being aware of the body, but be deeply present, the mind is everywhere in the body, then, then you have now, you are in the same area of your cells, the same areas of your body, then you can many times even perceive your own body, what is happening, but also you can tell now, okay, open up, soften, open here, okay, move, you don't need to paralyze. And then also you get into why are you paralyzed in the first place? Why, why this is frozen? <laughs> you know, like we go into a fight or flight. Why there is a fight or flight is still in the body. If in this moment, nothing is happening. Mm. Make sense? Yeah. And so I'm just thinking too, if anyone's listening and they're thinking, man, why haven't I been able to heal before? Cause I've done meditations. I've done, um, manifestation and affirmations and all of these things. It's and a I'm, voice for everything. <laughs> right. Right. Like we're told like, you know, wake up at four in the morning and meditate because that's when melatonin is the most and blah, blah, blah. You can connect to the quantum more during those time, those periods. But it sounds like just from listening to you, it's, we have got to get out of our own way, right? We have got <laughs> to, you can think all of these things, but if there's that resistance that's inside of you and you're not present, you're not connected, Connect. It doesn't matter all the thinking thoughts you're doing. It's just kind of going nowhere because you're not accessing that deeper layer of the quantum. Is that yeah, right? Exactly. You're right. And also you're saying something very important here. Your thoughts, your thoughts, your thoughts. Many times we are not present in the body. We are just in the head. <laughs> in the, to tell you the truth, in the prefrontal cortex right behind our forehead. We are just even present in the top of the head internally. So when I am guiding people, I help them to connect first in their own head more deeply. So they're not just in the, in the upper part of the head because there's a relationship between your head and your whole body. You also need to connect your lips. You connect your chin. If you connect to your chin and your lips and your jaw, you are connecting to your pelvis. And mm. I think I mentioned that to you when you, I said, and, and many people look, my, my clients, my students, they kind of look strange when I say that. But the beauty is there are two scientific papers now showing that when you are in your jaw more present and the posture that you have in your hip affects your jaw, your jaw affects your pelvis. And I'm like, yay, science is getting where I am. <laughs> I was so happy when I discovered that because I can see that, but not everybody can see. But now they are, they are, they are really seeing the relationship you have between the jaw and the pelvis. And this is through the spine. It's not just like, it's not woo-woo, okay? <laughs> I might go to woo-woo a little bit, but there's also a lot of science behind this. So 
if you are more present in the whole head, behind your nose, behind your cheekbones, you are more present in your chest and your gut also. This helps to open up here and there. And that affects your breathing. And you can see rib cage breathing has to do with your chest has to do with contracting when we are scared because we need to protect our main organ, our heart and our lungs so that we continue breathing in case we had an, a, a, whole, a real physical attack. So this also has to do with that. And we normally have the cheekbones because I'm, so the listener do not what is this, this, this I'm, I'm pointing now to my cheekbones. The cheekbones normally has a lot of tears stored internally, even inside of the bones. Tears that we could not have shed, that we, for whatever reason, we couldn't cry. Sometimes there was no support. Sometimes, as a man, sometimes, oh, you cannot cry because you, you, know, you're not, you need to be strong. But for all of us, Many times, if the parents look at you like, what, what's the problem? You know, that, then you, we don't cry because we don't want to cause more problem. More problems. Then you, we have tears stored in the cheekbones. We have tightness in the chest. We don't breathe the capacity that we have. That is in itself cause of health issues. <laughs> that in itself cause health issues. So there is a relationship in our whole head in relation to the whole body. It's important not to be just in the upper part behind the forehead, but deeply present in the whole head so that the whole body is more present. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I was just thinking, you know, being a former police officer, wearing a vest, the vest is very constricting around the diaphragm and that can change the breathing and that can change everything. It can change talking, everything. That yeah. You're talking about it. Just what a big light bulb that just was listening to you talk. Um, you know, I was thinking, it sounds like just from listening to you that being present is ultra important. Ultra, and, I love your word, ultra important. <laughs> uh, yeah, and you know, uh, I'm a go-getter and I'm sure many of the clients that you deal with are go-getters and want to achieve, achieve, achieve. And we are driven more than ever in this world right now with the phones and everything. That's all it is. And so we're on a hamster wheel. What are some things then that you do on a regular basis to access presence? Maybe, you know, that uh, do you meditate or are there things that you try to do to center your body? I would imagine this is a practice you would do every day because every day we're going to be bombarded and go back and new things are coming up that are going to rock our world. Yeah. So being so, present is very important. Yeah. And, and I'm, I'm very glad you asked this question because one of the things that happened many times is. Uh, when we are go-getter, we also tend to, as I was saying, we are most of the time up in the head instead of the full head and full body. We are many times also, we are in front of our bodies. It's like, what do you mean? <laughs> that means that our mind is pushing us to go forward faster and arrive sooner. <laughs> and then, And then when we when we do that is our consciousness also go forward. Then we disconnect with ourselves because we are not in our skin. I don't call meditation that this can be called meditation. I avoid this word because everybody associates meditation with Zen meditation, which is no thinking. And I love to think. I love to use my mind when I'm present. <laughs> I don't want to say, oh, I don't think anything. No, I have, in fact, a lot of creativity when I am deeply, more deeply connected. Also, when I'm, we can also do, if it's okay with you, we can do here five minutes of inner, I call this inner connection. We are connecting with ourselves, the inner, inner parts of ourselves. And we can do this in the end of our podcast here for, for the audience to, to know how to, to be more present. And also my presence transmit presence for the people who listen to it. It has a transmission in that subtle way because of the field, almost like two radios are on the same station. You can hear better for people who used to re listen to the radios in the past. <laughs> they know what I'm talking about. So. Uh, the best is that you connect every day and after a while, and it, this, this while means different people, different time happened in terms of it can be two months, three months, five months, one year, it depends on the person. 
But of course, when you connect with yourself, you already your body relax. It releases a lot of tension that you're holding that you're not aware of. So that is one part. It doesn't work. This is not enough, let's say. It doesn't work. It's not the best way. The inner connection is not enough to release the deep, large uh, constrictions or tightness that is in the body for a particular reason. That there is a, like I had this paralyzation, there was a particular cause, the root cause, right? It, it doesn't go there, but it opens the opportunity to go there. Without being in the body, you cannot even go toward the root cause because it doesn't open. It gives a inner, inner connection, gives inner safety inside to be able to navigate this inner territory. So a person, as, as you go and you practice, suddenly you don't need to, am I present? You're always present. That's the beauty of it. As you practice, you're always present. And then what happens when you stop a minute or a few seconds, you just connect more deeply with yourself. And this, that is infinite space inside of us. And if we're going to talk about space of the cells and the trillions of cells and the trillions of the space we have, we have more space than anything else inside of us. So more and more you connect more deeply then you really find internally, you know, root cause of issues and also release. And also you can have access to creativity. You have access to information because it is in the field. It is in the field available for you. So I think I heard Nassim, the physicist, talking that the, the universe has information in this field that the uh, as you access, you send information to the universe. The universe also send back information. And there is a feedback loop, which just enhance your life and get your life better. And that's why I say it's not only for health, it's manifestation, it's money, it's romance, it's wealth and health and whatever you want. So because you are connecting with your true nature, you're connecting with, uh, I also like to call the most divine part of yourself, this divine consciousness, this quantum field for me is divine consciousness. We connect deeply with that, that our true nature, who we really are. And, and that is communication. That's why I have sometimes, uh, I mentioned to you, sometimes I have revelations also of, how can this person heal faster? <laughs> Just like, yeah. boom, like this. And also, not only this, I have revelations for the humanity. Like, oh, every human being has this type of inner walls. They, this needs to be, you know, released. I'm like, okay. Now I am like, okay, tell me how to do even faster, please. <laughs> yeah. So more we connect more we are connected uh, without even then practicing, although we love to practice, and, and more you open, more you open internally. Make sense? Yeah, and I want to ask you just one, one specific kind of question. I'm curious Ooh. about how you see almost the world now, being a quantum healer, because when I think about the quantum, the more and more I think about it, mm -hmm. I think what's the point of anything else? Like that's the only place that really you should spend any time. If you want to make radical change, like we can, we can take supplements for our health. We can do all these things. I'm not saying I, do. That. I love that. We have to go from the very physical to the very subtle. I think it's wonderful. Yeah. yeah I, I think it's great. You know, take some of these things, but at the highest level of healing in a metaphysical sense, at the end of the day, it all starts in the mind. And yes. you being able to go into the, so you being able to go into the quantum, I, I find very fascinating. I read books about it. I talk to people like you, it gets me to understand a little bit better, but how do you almost see that quantum? Like, is it a world of like, is it a galaxy? Is it a stars? Is it just protons and neutrons? Like, do you see people's like buzzing? Is it just energy? Is it like an aura field? How do you almost think yeah, about I'm it? I'm going to say to you two things that you mentioned there. So one is, I don't like to use much the word energy because I like to make a distinction between energy, Coca-Cola, and champagne. <laughs> That's my analogy. I have many analogies. Yeah. The reason is when I say, if I say energy, even if I say, oh, I'm a healer, 
if I say this, everybody think I'm sending energy and I'm using my hand. Or, and you and, said that earlier, Roberta, you said I used to send energy. And I thought to my, I was thinking, what's wrong with that? Why not do that? It sounds like a good not, thing to be able to do. Because it's not deep enough, first of all, and mm. it doesn't go, let's say there is a very thin veil between the field of consciousness and your inner wall or the inner walls, because we don't have one, we have a few of them, <laughs> okay? So this is the really, this is right in front of this connection with this field of consciousness or the quantum field. Doesn't mean you are all inner walls. I wanna tell the audience, otherwise they're gonna say, oh my gosh, then I can, no. You can connect right now deeply with this field, deeply, because you are not, only in our walls, okay? That's uh, for sure, for sure. But when you have in our walls, and we all have in our walls, we cannot com we cannot connect more authentically, more deeply, or in in our totality, the totality of our being. So we and this has a reason. We did not disconnect randomly because we are nuts. <laughs> Even though sometimes it seems like we are nuts, but we are not. There is always a reason, even when you use before the word resistance. I don't believe in resistance. I believe in fear inside. I remember many, many years ago when someone said, look inside. And even after this healing, and I'm like, I don't want to look anything inside. You know, who knows what I'm going to, I'm going to find a monster here. <laughs> so yeah. there are in the walls, but we can connect already with this field, but we cannot connect in the, the depths of our, our being. We cannot be the totality of our being if we are holding back something. And that's the reason I, I teach that and I, with my clients for health and for everything is to really to dissolve this because it does affect every aspect of your life. It does not affect only your health. It affects everything. Everything, you know, a lot of people work with mindset and I said, mindset is great. It's uh, many times going to be what superficial, because unless you release the mind that is lodged in the body, which is totally controlling our lives because it's unconscious and we do not know you, you're going to have to work again and again and again, because that mind needs to be understood, seen, heard to be released. So that being said, one day in this very room that I am here talking to you, I was deeply connecting and I have a friend and that's why I love group work because group work is great to increase the, the container, the potential of what can happen. And I, I was with a friend and we are both connecting deeply with ourselves and suddenly, <laughs> again, suddenly I am seeing this whole universe full of stars and galaxies and I this is inside of my body and I'm like what is this look and then I connect with the compassion itself I was not sounding compassion I was I became compassion mm. and then I'm like talking to the compassion as compassion itself I'm like all humanity has the right of this compassion and it's like, what about the criminals? Including the criminals. I'm like, wow, is this? And then my friend who was here looked at me and said, wow. And I said, what happened? He said, there's so much light coming out of your body. I'm going to heal my body. <laughs> Such a funny experience. And I'm, it's not like a you know, few seconds. I was there for 20 minutes to half an hour. And I closed my eyes. I would see those stars, the galaxies, the whole universe. And, 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 I, and I'm asking my friend, tell me what you see. He said, no, I'm busy. I'm now healing myself. <laughs> and I would, it was something really, really beautiful. And... The reason uh, I'm saying this is because I really see the whole universe is inside of us. I guess I'm going to tell you one more weird. Now as we're going a little bit woo-woo here, I'm going to yeah, tell you a little it. bit more of this woo-woo thing. So at the night, I'm telling my husband all this happened. I said, I wish I had a picture to show you what I saw today, these galaxies. And a voice inside of my head says, look at the NASA pictures. I said, NASA pictures? 
Of course, and for, I went online and I started to look and suddenly I saw the same thing I saw inside of my own body. So I think we are made of the same, the same elements of the stars, of the galaxies, and everything for me is inside. And that being said, I am very normal. I'm very grounded. And I, I really feel sometimes people say, oh, I cannot feel my body. I'm seeing the energy. I said, no. You need to feel your body. And I do everything online. But sometimes I say, if I were in person with you, I would step on your foot. I'm sure you would feel a pain. <laughs> so I'm very grounded here because the main purpose of for me life is to be presence, the light in this body, in this dimension we are here right now. So everything is quantum, is to become quantum here in your body and, and being a human being with the potential of everything that you can be, you know? I'm still working on my progress, even though I go into this, whoa, look at this, wow. I, I'm very grounded, I'm very here, very present with every daily life, paying my bills, doing what I need to do, <laughs> eating healthy food, taking my supplements. I don't discard because we still have things to open. I still have things to open. You still have things to open. We still have things to open. So we continue the journey. So it is, it is a beautiful journey, but it demands courage. It demands courage mm. because sometimes um, we're going to face many times the inner walls. As I mentioned before, there's a reason for that. And many times we need to see what happens. Sometimes we can open without seeing, and it's wonderful. But sometimes we need to see exactly what happened, why it happened, and to be able to release. Yeah? Yeah. Makes sense? Wow. wow. Roberta, talk about just some of... I don't want to call them miracles, but just some of the, some of the transformations that you've seen with some of your clients. And, you know, also I'd be curious if people are interested and they're like, man, this sounds kind of crazy or woo woo, but I always bring on people that I think can bring results. I know you bring results. Oh, yeah, so I'm always, if people are interested also, I think they might be interested in like, what would it be like to work with you? Is it, do you have to see you once? Some Do people just see you once and like, they're great. They never see you again. Or do some people, like you said, yeah, there's good, layers of dysfunction. Yeah. So sometimes you got to go through those layers. But yeah, what would be have... typical for most people? Is it five, 10 times? Like, what does it look like? This is quite of a difficult question. Normally what I do now is I have a one year program. And the reason mm. is because I'm working mainly with people who have autoimmune disease, but sometimes cancer, but sometimes they don't have an autoimmune disease. Also, is this the yeah. group that you're talking about too, where you're, everyone meets in a group? I love that. That's so cool. Yeah. Okay. And the way I now have the hot seat because the group is like me when I was with my friend and we are practicing together. I know I, because he was also very present, we are practicing this and we're practicing and practicing. I know because we are practicing together, I went into a deeper area that alone I was not able to go. And I know that. So presence of others help you to be more present. Mm. <laughs> Makes sense, I think. We and are and I think we, we are all suffering from, if there's this idea of oneness, right? Yes. There's a, there's an idea in the, in the, in the quantum. It is an experience. You can feel this. That's what I'm saying. I felt humanity. Mm -hmm. There was not one human being is there. It was humanity as one It's really oneness. It's yeah. I think the religions talk about brotherhood and sisterhood since the beginning of time. This is the experience of it, which I love it. The experience of it. And then we can call a name. <laughs> I name it one. But it's, I like very much group because group brings people to be humble also about their own experience. A lot of people are afraid to, you know, uh, talk about their own issues or things, but you don't need to talk. You just go into the body and sometimes you will talk. And But when you talk, it's because you already feel comfortable. The group also grows together and there is a support system. It's also very good. Oh, I have this. Oh, I have the same pain. Oh, I have all. Like you said, your left hip, I mentioned, I had a left hip. Everybody has something in the left side. The left side yeah. has a lot of fear most of the time. So 
right side is quite tight. If I always say right ankle, right knee, right hip, or right um, how say wrist or or shoulder or elbow is because the right side is more rigid because it's ready for the fight or the leg for the flight to escape. Mm. Normally, this is happening because the body is stressed and the left side is holding fear while the right side is ready to do something about this. So this type of thing that uh, we have very specific things, why I constricted this particular thing, why in this particular way, why I create this particular, I, I don't like to say I create this disease, it's not that, but it's why this disease represents something that was exactly reflecting a part of my life. So there's always a reason for that. And it's very like much like a snowflake that each person is like a, your digital print. Each person is, that is the particular unique thing, uniqueness of each person. But we also have the collective, the, the thing that is all, we all do the same because in terms of the body, our fibers are more or less going in the same direction. The fascia is moving in the same way in, in, in everybody's body. Your mouth is here, you know, more or less, you know, the, the directionality of constrictions are the same and it helps to have the group. So I like to work with the group and, and it's uh, ad everybody advance faster. That's the beauty of it. Everybody advance faster. But also I have, uh, uh, I'm doing a summit. <laughs> I want to talk if it's okay with you. I want yeah, to talk about the, uh, talk about the, the summit. Um, and I think that's great. I love that group program that you're, that you're talking about really quick before we jump into the summit, talk about, um, just talk about some of the transformations that you've seen that oh, people yes. had. We, we yes. skipped over oh, that one. About that. Yeah. So besides mine, <laughs> besides yours and mine. Yeah. Yes. Oh, yes. There's so many stories. So I'm going to see if I can remember some of them to illustrate. Um, allergy. I have a person who came, she could not eat a particular food, very common food here in the U.S. And, and she went to do all the tests, everything. Nothing was getting better. And then we worked together. This allergy was, I'm just going to skip right into the, what happened. The, the allergy was triggered by someone who passed away. And this person rem was the same situation when she, this person passed away as, a, as she was an adult when she started to have this allergy. And this person passed away in the same way when she was seven years old and her best friend, was, who was her cousin, passed away. So they served that food in the funeral ceremonies. From that point on, she could not eat that food anymore. Wow. But when we go back, the tears, the, the immense pain of a seven-year-old dealing with death without understanding was all internally you know, related to that allergy. And then you clear that, allergy is clear. <laughs> it's not, I have another person who couldn't sleep. She couldn't sleep for... She, she did everything she could. She couldn't sleep. She couldn't sleep. In the end, it goes when she was nine years old and, and she had the uh, pierced and uh, her ears was pierced and her, she was little. In fact, nine years old was uh, her older sister. Her older sister wants to, to change the, the peers, you know, when you first do. And then, and then because she couldn't allow that to happen because she was so scared, they decided, the, the older sister decided to do that when she was sleeping. I said, okay, when she's sleeping, we can go there. From that point on, she became quite vigilant of her sleeping. Wow. Uh, 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 when she was sleeping so that no one would disturb her. And then she slept well for many years. This is forgotten completely. And then suddenly, 50 years old, something triggered. And then you go there, cannot sleep, cannot sleep, cannot sleep. When you go, it brought you right into that moment that she was very vigilant. Any little sound, any little thing, she was you know, in alert state, fight or flight, because at that moment, when you're little, it's your life, it's survival mode. You go into survival mode because your life depends on that. Chronic pain, I have so many cases, chronic pain, back pain, a lot of back pain. I have this person who did many things. And when we 
with go with your mind into the body, she she ended up remembering she fell and when she was I think five or six, she was playing outside and there was a hole and she didn't see the hole because she was playing like going backwards. And then she fell in this hole. No one saw she was there for hours. And then in the end, she has to climb back by herself. And, and that was all her back pain. Mm. I have a person who said, I trans there are many people who said I transformed their lives, but this one was a very, very strong case because she was not my client. Her sister was my client uh, here in the U.S., but the, her, her older sister lived in Spain. And she called me, my client, and said, my sister is up to calling an ambulance now. She can't take it anymore. I said, what's going on? And she said, I think you can help her. I said, okay, what's going on? She said, she cannot walk. She cannot sit. She cannot move. She has so much pain in her pelvis. And, and uh, she has already done everything, you know, like uh, took medicine, went to the doctor, physical therapy, right? and then it reached a point that is extreme pain and she's going to call ambulance. Can you talk to her? I said, I was on the street. I said, okay, let me go at least to my par park, my car here and be in a parking lot and then, you know, use uh, internet call, what's up. And I call uh, her in Spain and she, in, and I said, I don't need to see you because normally I like to use Zoom. I like to see the person but I don't need to see the person to see because it reveals in the field. Mm. So then I saw, I, I, and she said, I cannot sit. I said, you don't need to sit, be in any position. And then just I like, guide her, go with your mind here. That's of, of, and then, and suddenly she said, oh, I can see myself. I am a six-year-old girl. I can see my dress and my white dress. And, I, and I'm seeing this. And so she started to have this memory revealed. And it was so important. And normally when something very traumatic happened, the pain also is quite strong. And uh, in the end, when what happened is when she was six years old, she saw someone killing herself and she fainted and she woke up in the hospital and this whole mm. memory, all of this was stored in her pelvis and how is it stored in her pelvis? I don't know. It's in the field also, but remembering all this and remembering the shock and releasing the shock, this is like a 55, if I'm not wrong in her age, or she was almost 60 years old or 60 something, I don't remember. So you you just make the calculation is like 55 decades, 50 years or six decades there. And something happened that was calling her attention, probably something that was causing fear and it was getting worse and worse and worse. And and she said, you transformed my life. This has changed everything. It changed everything. And of course, she didn't call the ambulance. She didn't call anything. The pain was gone. And this was so deep. So sometimes one trauma like this is easier than developmental trauma that is a little bit every day. Something happening in our family, in our house, in our home, in our house and things that in the neighborhood or something or school because it's one thing and then you go right there into that cause and it opens and sometimes when we have like something dynamic in the family it takes longer not because um, it takes longer because it has many times happened many times so the body learned to contract and stop to contract and stop to contract and stop and then suddenly it get contracted it doesn't open anymore and there are many layers and especially this case the person who she saw in this terrible act was not her family member so it's different when it's something related family goes deeper in the body and it can be take layers i just say it's just layers yeah yeah, yeah. So that's few of them but the chronic pain is chronic pain is like that ah chronic pain okay we can open that we can <laughs> good 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 i love that well I have to, i'm gonna have to join the membership 
Um, Roberta, talk about, you've got this amazing summit coming up for autoimmune, but it's going to be much more than that. I mean, that's going to be the main focus, but it's going to talk about all the things we're talking about, mindset, health, uh, wellness, manifestation, all these beautiful things. Talk about that. And, and I'm inviting you to be a speaker there. You invited me to be there, yeah, <laughs> as well. I'm very pleased that you're going to be there also as a speaker. So this is called the Real Story of Autoimmune Disease uh, Summit. It's, in fact, my third summit and discover how your past shapes your biology because we are talking about fascia we talk about everything so it is um, from september 30th monday to october 4th uh, friday in one week we're gonna have more than 25 experts talking about autoimmune disease but as you mentioned not only that we're gonna talk about cancer but most importantly we're gonna talk about health you know, you're going to talk health. When I say health, I'm talking about physical, emotional, and mental, giving you tips, strategies, freebies, lots of freebies, and much more. And it's free to join. And I think the easiest way is go to my Instagram and DM me summit. Or you can also have the link, uh, click the link in my bio so that you can register right away. I will say the link here just in case. For people who are listening, it's autoimmunediseaseevent.com slash summit. Exactly what it is. But it's uh, the, from the Instagram. My Instagram is Roberta Tachi. It's my name. It's very easy. And you just DM me. I send you the link. But the link will be, it is in the, in the bio also. <laughs> Yeah. Thank you for my promotion. Yeah, I amazing. also have an app called Embody Wellness, and and the summit will be there so that you can access the summit easily and listen to what uh, you know you would like to listen. Yeah. Embody Wellness, awesome. And then Roberta, if if anyone's interested in working with you and joining your membership. I'm assuming they they go to your website and they reach out or there's their sign up page or something like that. Where can people connect with you other than Instagram? Is it your website? Is it the best place to reach you? I think you can go to my website, but I'm going to be very honest with you. I like to be honest and direct. I haven't updated my website for a long time. My website is my name, robertattach.com. I think it's easier to send me an email info at robertattach.com and i think it's the easiest way because uh, you know it's my name roberta tach t-a-c-h-i this is a japanese name <laughs> i lived in japan for many years because my husband is japanese and um, it's easier to just say info at robertattach.com but of course, you can go to my homepage. It's kind of like I haven't updated for a long time. But I know the feeling. Yeah, I'm working. I'm working. I have been working very hard on the summit to you know bring the best, and I think that would be a great way to know my more work. You know, yeah. health and my my work also. I will be presenting there in the very end of the summit as well. Amazing, Roberta Tachi. Thank you so much for being on the show. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. I really, I really enjoyed and it uh, was a pleasure to be here, Joe. Thank you for inviting me.